In just roughly 35 hours, SpaceX will join a baptism of fire toward its goal of rapid reuse of Starship, called Flight 6, which promises plenty of surprises. After the incredible mid-air booster catching during Flight 5, SpaceX aims to repeat this feat in the upcoming test flight. And of course, like previous test flights, Starship's upper stage will be descending directly into the sea. Unlike previous flights, however, we'll see the ship re-enter during daylight, giving us a clear view of Starship's new splashdown method. This approach promises to allow flexibility in designing and executing launch trajectories that meet mission objectives. Find out everything in today's episode. On November 15th, Ship 31 and Booster 13 were stacked and ready for the ever-approaching Starship Flight 6. More importantly, this just happens 22 days after B-13's static fire test, and 33 days following Flight 5, demonstrating the increasingly fast turnaround between Starship's test flights. FTS or Flight Termination System was installed on Booster 13, which is the final phase of preparation prior to the launch of Starship on Tuesday. Installing explosives on a rocket is standard procedure before any launch since it gives teams on the ground a chance to destroy the vehicle in case it loses control during flight. Additionally, the power source for these explosives is separate from the rockets since they have to operate in case of any electrical malfunction in the vehicle. Consequently, the FTS system runs on batteries which tend to lose charge the longer they remain installed on the vehicle. Installing FTS immediately after stacking means that the wet dress rehearsal test could be skipped. So far, it's unclear why. Perhaps SpaceX totally believes in Starship's performance in Flight 5, so they don't need this test anymore. This sixth integrated launch of Starship will continue along the unfinished path of Flight 3, meaning reigniting a ship Raptor engine while in space that was canceled in the March test flight. The ship is also equipped with new secondary thermal protection materials to test, which is upgraded from what has been done in Flight 5. The entire sections of heat shield tiles on either side of the ship are removed to serve for study for catch-enabling hardware on future vehicles. Without those changes, in general, Flight 6 is just a part of the iterative process toward a fully and rapidly reusable launch system. Booster 13 will follow Booster 12's trajectory, including returning to the launch site and being caught by the chopstick arms, aiming to master this capability. Ship 31 will fly the same suborbital trajectory as the previous flight test, with splashdown targeted in the Indian Ocean. decision to opt for a splashdown landing for the ship stands in stark contrast to the company's track record of triumphant landings achieved with previous ventures. SpaceX has gained acclaim for its adeptness at gently touching down Falcon 9 first-stage rockets on their landing legs since 2015. An astonishing 368 times, the company has successfully done so, and they've even gone so far as to reuse a particular booster 18 times. The proficiency in landing and reusing Falcon 9's first stage gives SpaceX more confidence and experience to attempt a much harder project, Starship. Additionally, on May 5, 2021, SpaceX successfully landed its Starship prototype, the SN-15. It reached an altitude of 10 kilometers, performed maneuvers, and landed safely on a concrete landing pad six minutes after takeoff. However, SpaceX decided to try to catch the Super Heavy in advance, and this stems from several strategic and operational reasons. The first one is about cost efficiency. SpaceX prioritizes the ability to catch the booster because the booster is a more expensive component compared to the Starship, so recovering it can lead to substantial savings in future missions. Catching the booster allows SpaceX to reuse it multiple times, significantly reducing the cost of launches. Both components of SpaceX's launch system, Super Heavy and Starship, are designed for full reusability. However, catching Starship will require more steps in preparation, especially as it is equipped with TPS. SpaceX plans to install catch-enabling hardware on either side of the ship, 
but it means that location will not be protected by heat shield. And that was also SpaceX's test objective on Flight 6. Catching the Super Heavy booster first allows SpaceX to gradually increase the complexity of its operations. The Super Heavy is larger and heavier than previous rockets like Falcon 9, making it a more challenging target for recovery efforts. Once this system is proven reliable with Super Heavy, they can apply lessons learned to catch Starship, which has its own unique challenges due to its size and design. Otherwise, SpaceX would continue to test catching Super Heavy, following a fail fast, learn fast philosophy, which emphasizes iterative testing and learning from each flight. By focusing on the Super Heavy first, they can gather crucial data and insights that will inform future attempts with Starship, thereby reducing risks. Besides, Super Heavy has a different flight trajectory to the upper stage. The spacecraft's trajectory is more complex, so it will take more time to test before it can be put into practice. Super Heavy's trajectory starts by igniting 33 of the Super Heavy's engines, and the rocket lifts off. At an altitude of about 40 miles, the Super Heavy cuts off all but three of its center engines, and the Starship separates. The booster later turns around and fires its Raptor engines to return to the launch site. As the booster approaches the launch pad, it slows to a near hover. The booster lines up with two chopstick arms on the launch tower, called Mechazilla, and the arms close around the booster. Meanwhile, after separating from the booster, the Starship's Raptor engines ignite and it accelerates into space. If the mission involves orbit, the Starship will continue to accelerate until it reaches orbital velocity. In the landing phase, the Starship will re-enter Earth's atmosphere and perform a controlled landing. Frankly, Starship's landing maneuver is a new and unique style of landing a rocket. It's called the belly flop maneuver, which involves the spacecraft flipping over and re-entering the Earth's atmosphere with its belly facing downwards. This allows for a controlled descent and landing, similar to how a skydiver would land. To simulate the conditions of this maneuver, SpaceX has decided to drop the Starship into the sea. This will allow them to test the spacecraft's ability to control its descent and landing, as well as its structural integrity when subjected to the forces of re-entry. If something goes wrong, the rotating part of the plane passes over the ocean on a trajectory that ensures that all the debris will fall into the ocean, eliminating the impact on populated areas. Take for example the case of Flight 5, 65 minutes after liftoff. The ship fired three of its six engines to hover over the ocean before tipping over and exploding. In both initial test flights, SpaceX chose the landing site for spacecraft in the Pacific Ocean. The splash point is at a safe distance, but still very close to the Hawaiian island of Kauai. Since Hawaii is actually part of the United States, SpaceX can salvage the spacecraft and study the solid debris to gather potentially valuable information. Nevertheless, from Flight 3 onwards, the landing site has been changed to the Indian Ocean. According to SpaceX, this will allow it to attempt new techniques like in-space engine burns as part of a broader array of testing objectives that will also see SpaceX try to reignite a Raptor engine in space. The current operational constraints limit the optimization of launch trajectories and decrease the probability of success for early mission objectives. Landing operations in the Indian Ocean would give SpaceX the flexibility to design and execute launch trajectories that meet mission objectives. The FAA also shared details for SpaceX's future Starship test. According to the agency, SpaceX plans to conduct up to a total of 10 nominal operations, including up to a maximum of five overpressure events from Starship intact impact, and up to a total of five re-entry debris or soft water landings in the Indian Ocean within 12 months of National Marine Fisheries Service NMFS, correspondence through a concurrence letter. A copy of this letter, part of the FAA's release, was signed on March 7th. 
Additionally, the NOA NMFS's contingency letter adds that the FAA first contacted it for an Indian Ocean landing site on November 21st as part of SpaceX's plans to conduct five landings. This was just three days after Starship Flight 2, and SpaceX officials met the NMFS in December. SpaceX informed the NMFS that it was going to revise their analysis of Starship's explosion based on information gathered about Starship's landing orientation during the most recent flight, which occurred on November 18, 2023. In addition to the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean, Elon Musk's rocket company also aims at another landing site in Australia. In July, there was news that SpaceX is negotiating with U.S. and Australian officials to land and recover one of its Starship rockets off the coast of Australia. This initiative marks a potential expansion for Elon Musk's company in the region, aligning with the country's strengthened security ties. Following a successful Starship rocket splashdown in the Indian Ocean in June, SpaceX is eager to extend its testing. These controlled landings and subsequent recoveries are crucial for the rapid development of their reusable rocket aimed at satellite launches and lunar missions. SpaceX plans to launch Starship from Texas to deliver satellites to space and then be retrieved from Australian waters. An Australian Space Agency spokesman confirmed organizations had started talks about potential rocket launches after the U.S.-Australian agreement was approved. The Australian Space Agency is currently engaging with domestic and international companies looking to explore opportunities, he said. It's estimated, with the agreement in place, spacecraft operators could supply up to 100 space launches over the next decade with a benefit to the Australian economy of $1 billion. U.S. rocket launches will be allowed under regulatory changes in the Technology Safeguards Agreement between the two countries, which was designed to protect U.S. technology launched in Australia and ensure that it remains under U.S. control. U.S. officials signed the agreement in November last year, but the changes were referred to Australia's Joint Standing Committee on Treaties for Scrutiny and Public Consultation in February. The committee recommended its approval in July, after finding it could help to create highly skilled technical jobs and would benefit the Australian space sector and provide opportunities for Australian companies. For the U.S., this would necessitate easing U.S. export controls on advanced space technologies. There are also ongoing discussions about towing the Starship to ports on Australia's western or northern coasts. The talks reflect U.S. efforts to bolster Australia's military capabilities amid regional tensions with China. SpaceX's potential operations in Australia could enhance bilateral space defense collaborations and support Australia's growing space industry. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.